I really love when we can be in the chapel because it's intimate and we can see each other. And this is like mishpacha. I love it. Uh, how was everyone's Seder last night? Beautiful. I'm happy to hear that. Too short. Too short. I'm not used to hearing that. It's like, okay, all right. So last night at our seders, if everyone at their seder went through the four children, right? There's this this um, moment in our seder where we talk about the four children, uh, and we had this opportunity. I think about six years now, where we invited Rabbi Ed Feinstein from Valley Beth Shalom. Uh, who came and he spoke and he taught about education. He talked about Judaism. He spoke on all these beautiful things. But his thesis, his main thesis for the weekend was that we should be like the simple son, the son who is always asking, what does this mean to you? That's what Judaism is, is consistently asking the questions, not just trying to find the answers, but asking the questions, what does this mean to you? And in our Passover Seder, the context for all of that, for the simple question the simple child asking this question is, what does Pesach mean to you? What does the Passover Seder mean to you? And in some ways, the answer to that is pretty easy. We're sitting around this table just as we have our whole lives, just like our parents did, like our grandparents did. It is the door of a door. It is from generation to generation. It's filled with meaning. It's this idea of liberation that we ourselves are leaving Egypt. There's meaning. There's mashma'ud. There's, it's, it's palpable, the sense of meaning that comes from a Passover Seder. It's an emotional place, and it should be. It's beautiful, it's connecting us. But the rest of Passover can be a little bit tricky, and especially what we're about to say in just a few minutes, which is liturgically, admittedly, a hard thing for us to try to figure out and make sense of, which is we're done saying Mashiva Ruach Omerit HaGeshem. We are finishing these blessings for rain, and we're now about to read how. We're gonna talk about do. What does do mean to you? And we laugh because probably for most of us, not a whole lot. Probably not a whole lot. And to be honest, the rain that we were asking for for a blessing for probably didn't mean a whole lot to us either. I mean, we have to remember that those blessings of water were central to our ancestors who lived in Eretz Yisrael, and it was their sustenance. It was their life. You pray for rain because it is rain that gives you water. It is the very, very different idea than in Egypt where it was the Nile that sustained everyone. In Eretz Yisrael, it is the rain coming down that sustained everyone. So that means something very different to them than it does to us. But I wanted to do a quick little teaching this morning. I found this incredible text from the Beit Yosef. This is also one of the great things about Passover morning is that we have a smaller group and we can be in the chapel, but we get to nerd out over texts because the folks who would self-select to come to Pesach day one services are the folks who would like to enjoy um, some of these texts. So it's a really great question. What do we do with do? How do we make tal meaningful to us? And the Beit Yosef, this great rabbi of the Middle Ages, asked the same question and said, we're going to do this liturgical moment and we know it's important. Because as you can see, the chazan is in his kittel. This is, a, this is powerful liturgy. There's a reason that this is such holy and sacred text and liturgy that we've been saying for generations. And the Beit Yosef asked this very question, why? What's the power of Tal? And he uses as a source text, the book of Hosea, where our ancestors said, we want God. We want God to bless our lives. We want God to bless our lives like the rains in Eretz Israel, And God responds to our ancestors in Hosea by saying, you guys got it all wrong. You got it all wrong. The idea of the rains coming down is like the miracles in Egypt. It's big, these big, big moments that happen in our lives. We as people think about those moments because they're big. They, they make a statement, the parting of the sea, the plagues, those are big miracles that take place for Pesach, for our holiday. But God says, rains can also be bad sometimes. Rains can cause floods. When there's not rain, it can stop up all of the agriculture. Rain is not what you want your God to be. Rain comes and rain goes and rain makes a big statement when it arrives. Rather, God says, I will be unto you like dew. I will be tall. 
where day in and day out, whether you recognize it or not, I am giving you blessings in the morning. Right when you wake up, small blessings that you might completely take for granted and majority of us might not even notice. When you go wake up in the morning to go for a morning walk or a morning run or to bring your trash cans in, whatever it is, and you have that wet grass in the morning, that, according to the Beit Yosef, is the theology that we're supposed to be embracing during Passover. Not the grandiosity of these great miracles which we talk about on the Seder, but post those miracles to talk about Joshua going into Eretz Israel and then saying, where is God in our lives? Do each and every day to focus, even though it's so easy to focus on the great miracles that we talk about during Passover, that the true miracles that we should be thinking of, that we should be discussing, that we should be holding in our hearts are the ones that come each and every day. The small miracles of waking up, of being surrounded by friends and family to recognize do.